Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cupid and you're not only going to get to talk to a Cupid today, but you're going to get to hear some love advice from psychic medium Tony Green. Hey Tony. Hi, how are you? Great, we're going to talk about love today. Love, love. I love me some love. Everybody's looking for love. So ladies, this is for you today. So um, you're going to get some a perspective from a matchmaker and a psychic. So Tony, let us know your perspective because I know as a matchmaker, a lot of women are want to be with somebody. They're lonely. Um, maybe they have a good life, but they just want that icing on the cake. But at the same time, sometimes they tend to look for that guy to be their kind of savior or, you know, maybe to save them financially or save them from loneliness or they have some fear going. And I think that that fear uh, from things that they feel they're lacking keeps, keeps the guy away. Absolutely. I am so happy we are doing this. You've written a book on love. I've written a book on love. I'm writing another book on love. Love is why we are here, first of all, on this plane. Um, we come here to become love. Now, if I could just say, Marla, love is not something you give. Love is not something you receive. Love is something you are that exudes from you to everybody else. It's a feeling emotion. So, Whatever level of love you are at is the level of love you will attract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big you one. Say that, that again. Is. Say that again. That's a tweetable. Uh, <laughs> that's a tweet tweet. Uh, yeah, it is a tweetable. Um, whatever level of love you are at is the level of love you will attract. Okay. And to expound on that or expand on that, wherever you are, we, we get a reflection of who and what we are in every area of our life, career, money, love. And it's to show us what we need to fix, mm -hmm. what we personally need to work on. When I was in my 20s, I was one of those drama queens, and I wanted to have a man, and I even, I have a new ebook, you guys, called Worthy of Love, uh, Empowering Yourself to Find Your Soulmate, and I put the links below. Um, so important, but I tell the story in there of when I was in my early 20s, and a guy broke my heart or dumped me, and I was so into the drama stuff that, I mean, I literally, like, lit his picture on fire, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think took I think a match to it. it. And you know, when we're in our early twenties, we don't understand what a partner is for. We think a partner is there to give us everything we want, like our parents did. As we mature, mature, we realize it's a give and take, and a relationship isn't about oh, I want this, I want that, and if you can't give it to me be gone with you. Mm -hmm. I Well, I've heard women in the past say, well, what's in it for me? What can they do for me? Otherwise, why am I here? So, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's so true. It's so true. Um, I think, especially in the old days, mm -hmm. women didn't have careers. Mm -hmm. Women, their career was having babies and taking care of the house. Yeah. So, it, they were taught get the best man that mm -hmm. can take care of you. Right. Today is a completely different world. I cannot tell you the number of women I know that make more than their partner. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I make more than my uh, husband. He does well, but I make a little bit more usually, you know, yeah. and uh, it's, it doesn't bother him in the least. It doesn't bother me in the least. We're partners. We pay everything together, and we bought a home, and we travel, and we have a great life. But I wasn't looking for someone to, you know, 
pay for everything for me because I guess I had that when I met him I was already like 39 and I I saw that I can make my own money I'm creative I can bring make things happen and as long as somebody wasn't uh, you know couch potato he he had a lot going on and he he always he's very creative he has a lot of different things like me and I love that about him and he's very responsible so, so I think the women looking for that big meal ticket, that big like almost the lottery with a guy to pay everything or to make a million dollars a year, makes prevents them from really finding that quality person. And maybe they will be wealthy as well, but but uh, that's not the and, first thing that you should be looking for. Right. I want to go back to one of the first things I said. The lover level of love you're at is the level you attract. When you talk about you and you talk about your partner that you're with, you guys were at the same level, mm -hmm. the same level creativ uh, creatively, the same level financially. You were both mature. So he was a reflection of you. And a lot of people don't realize they get a reflection of where they are, not what they want. You have to become what you want. Want another tweet of all? Another tweet will become what you want. Well, this brings up something. When I was uh, even in my thirties, I think looking back, I must have had very low self-esteem because I was. I remember dating a guy who was. Uh, well, I was waitressing at the time, and I was doing some TV commercials and acting, but I wasn't happy being a waitress. Um, nothing wrong with it, but I did it for 20 years and I always felt inside a little ashamed of it. I think because in my soul, I knew I had other talents to bring out and I wasn't doing it somehow. <clears throat> and it frustrated me. And so I was always like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I remember dating a guy who was an attorney and, and he had this big job and it was real exciting. And I would tell people, you know, oh, he's, you know, an attorney or he's doing... So I, I think it was... Because my I wasn't happy with what I was doing and my self esteem was low, so I was like, "Look who I'm dating. This guy does this," and I and I see this a lot. So we're looking for validation within ourselves with what someone else does. Even the women who want the guy to uh, buy an expensive handbag for them or a pair of shoes or buy them a car. Uh, I see this because I'm out in L.A. But it's it's like, hey. look, I'm so beautiful that I'm worth someone paying three thousand dollars to buy me a handbag so they're putting their self-worth into what somebody's willing to pay for them and this and is don't, yeah go ahead I'm sorry no, I'm, that this off. is something that we've got to get I I just want women to hear and know that they are worth so much more than a handbag it's not that's not their worth they're already worthy and that's why I wrote this book worthy of love <laughs> empowering yourself to find a soulmate not just because yeah. these looks will fade. I used to be a 10. I used to be, people used to walk up to me all the time and tell me how beautiful I was. Heads would turn when I walked in a yeah. room. Now I'm in my 50s. Nobody even takes a second glance. So you can't um, depend on that. Uh, it's going to fade and you've got to have these other qualities that are going to be make you uh, irresistible to find a right. partner. <laughs> and, and is it, you know, I used to do fitness modeling. I used to have... I think zero body fat. I was scolded once for it. And I was so buff and fit. And I never realized then what I look like. Now I do because, boy. When you look back at the photos. Not zero <laughs> anymore. But what I can tell you is when you're looking at a partner for physical sustaination, yeah. sustainability, you're missing the biggest Thing, and that's love. And I, I just want to even go one step further here because this is so important for people to get. If you're in that vibration of love, which is the highest vibration there is, the highest energetic form we can be in, love, it takes us right up there. Everything automatically flows to you. So if you find somebody and you really are in love and have love for that person, Everything's going to just come flowing to you anyway because you're in that higher vibration of love, yeah, right? Yeah. But if you just go for the material things or the physical things, you're going to end up miserable. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a scoreboard of I did this, you do that, you did that, I'm going to do this. It's, it's, not, it's not genuine. It's not a genuine uh, 
connection then. And if something happens, you know, money can go, be lost, looks can be lost, health can be lost. So you want to have that soul to soul connection. I remember uh, matchmaking years ago, uh, we, there was a client who was, he was like um, a money manager for wealth, wealthy people. And there was some crash that happened. I don't know if it was 2008 or whatever. And he lost a lot of people's money uh, for them. And he was so distraught that he killed himself. So, uh, yeah, see, so he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle that, that, uh, that happened. That, so, you know, money stuff, I mean. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's the three questions I ask myself when I'm dating a guy. Get ready. Okay, Here they come. all right. If there's a guy that wants to date me and I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I ask, if this guy was broke, absolutely zero dollars, would I still want him? Yeah, okay. Be let, let me tell you, money adds a certain amount of attractiveness to anybody. Sure. But if they they don't have money, all of a sudden they don't look the same. <laughs> so if this guy was broke, would I still be able to stay with him for the rest of my life? If he became, heaven forbid, I'm not even Catholic, a paraplegic, uh -huh. or ended up in a wheelchair, would I still want this guy? Yeah. Yeah. That's my second question. Third question, if I were a millionaire, yeah. would I still want this guy? Uh -huh. If any of those answers are no, you got to let him go because somebody else will love him and you will find somebody else to love you. Right. Well, my question was always when I was on a first date and I was sitting across from a guy maybe at a restaurant or out for a drink and I'd look at him and I'd think to myself, could would I be interested in kissing this guy? And if I said no, then I know that there's not the physical, because you do have to have that physical attraction, you know, the chemistry. Uh, so then I knew that. <laughs> yeah. I heard this once on some, some woman said this once on some talk show, when you marry a man for money or when you marry somebody for money, you earn every, every penny. penny. Of, That's right. Every, every penny. penny of it. And I thought, ooh, I work hard enough as it is. Yes. Yeah. And you know, it's fun making these goals together. And um, my husband and I are trying to pay off the house early. And we're, you know, and we've both got our creative projects going and which trip are we going to take next? And we don't go on first class extravagant trips, but we have so much fun. You know, we find the cute little hotels or the bed and breakfast, or we d get this deal and he's great at getting deals. He's like the master. So he like gets discounts. And so it's like fun. Wow. Look what we got. And then we can take that extra money and pay it towards the house. And, and, uh, it's, it's just, it's a, you want to think of life as fun and not, uh, also I want to say something about those big, we've got these big McMansions out here where, you know, in Los Angeles, the huge, I've been to people's home. I, I went to a client's house. He lived alone. His, his, it was 19,000 square feet and, and it was so big that, that you only really spend time in a couple of rooms, right? Your mate, the bedroom, uh, maybe the living room, kitchen, that's really about it. <laughs> Right. And right. then you've got to have worry about, you know, the alarm system and the cleaning it and the upkeep and the gardener and the pool. And, and it's like, run. Wouldn't it be we, better to just have a, a smaller place and you could shut the door and go for the weekend here or there and not have to worry about all this stuff breaking or fixing or hiring right. or <laughs> that's my, that's and, my take on it. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, when you're, when you're with somebody or, you know, the, Love, if you've ever truly been in love, it is the most incredible feeling. It, it, it's just, it, it, you can, there's nothing in the world that can replace that. So don't settle. Yeah, and just For think about how you love your that. dog or your cat. You know, how we, we just know. like, oh, see how. <laughs> Oh, yes, we've got, this is love, this is love in the purest form. Now, how could you love anybody more than these beauties? How? That's so, that's so wonderful. This is love. Oh, baby. That's Hi, baby. You would never expect your dog to go buy you a... 
a Chanel bag or a Prada. That's right. right. That's right. It is unconditional love. And that's why I think my relationship with my dog, Macy, is so important because she doesn't uh-huh. care what I look like. She doesn't care what I have. She's just, when I walk in that door, that's, it's, that's, I'm her world. And she's so happy yeah. just to be with me. I love right. that. Right, right. Now, can I give you another tweetable? Tweet, tweet. So, the level of love that you have for yourself is the level of love you can give and receive. So, if you, uh, let's say things have happened in your life and you have judgment for yourself about your past or somebody said something and you bought that bad stock or whatever it is, that's the amount of love you're comfortable receiving and that's the amount of love you can give. If somebody tries to give you more love than that, mm-hmm. guess what? You it's very uncomfortable to you and you start pushing that person away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. there's another work on that self love mm-hmm. and you will be amazed at how many people come up to you and say, I know we're meant to be together because they Feel that love and they want, they gravitate towards that love and that energy. Now, why do you think so many people are divorced? Oh, I, oh my goodness. Well, because first of all, they got married for the wrong reason. Mm-hmm. People feel chemistry and they feel like that's it. Yes. They don't, they're not practical about relationships. They think it's going to be a big picnic. The person you met in that first six weeks. They think that's the person they're marrying, and they're not realistic about relationships are the hardest job in the world. You have to work it. You have to work it. Now, here's my next tweetable. This is all in my upcoming book. I'm giving my book away here on this show. Um, If you would not have your partner, your relationship partner, be your business partner, you need to drop it like it's hot. You need to get rid of him. Because... Here's the thing. When you bring in a business partner, you look at their financials. You want to make sure they're going to bring something to the business. You want to make sure they're ethical and they're not going to steal from you. You want to make sure they're honest and they have character. You want to make sure they're going to work their butt off for that business. You want to make sure they have the same goals that you do. But when we get in a relationship, we're like, oh, he gave me a big O. I love him. He gave me a big O. <laughs> a big O. <laughs> then you're going to be saying after that, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Said, I love him. He buys me these big diamonds. I love him. But is that somebody who has the same goals as you? Or is that somebody who's just treating you like a princess? Right. Yeah. Well, recently we had a guy who who was very wealthy and he's a great great guy, but the, for the first date he had treated this girl like a princess, took had a car pick her up, bring her to his hotel, uh and they had a drink and then they took the car to a restaurant, one of the best restaurants in the world. The bill was over $1000. I think he said it was about $1200 for dinner and then had the car take her back. Well, Guess what? Uh, shortly after that, she contacted him and asked him to help her pay her rent. And so <laughs> she felt that, well, he's, this is going to be a gravy train here. He, so that was not a good <laughs> And he had to block her number. He was, he was so unhappy. And it was embarrassing for us because here we're, we matched him with okay. her. And he's not looking for that. Although any woman that would end up with him would have a fabulous lifestyle. But the, you don't yeah. do that from the get-go. So... I, I yeah, me, it's a great point there is, and I told him, don't do that from the get go. Take somebody out and have a $200 dinner. You don't need to have a $1,200. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. That was, that he didn't do anything wrong. When a guy shows up, he wants to show a woman how she'll be treated. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if she starts acting like a hooker, he's going to treat her like a hooker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to be just a little bit blunt there. If you start saying, pay my bills after one dinner, uh-huh. you're not. You're, you don't belong with a man that can treat you with respect and dignity. Here's the thing. If we get into this space where just because somebody was nice to us, then we have an expectation like, oh, he'll do this. That's wrong. He treated her like a lady. Yes. She did not respond like one. Oh, I love that. That's a tweetable. If you're treated like oh, a lady, respond like a lady. 
So here's a question. What about those women? For example, I have another woman who is this like poor little waif from another country. Uh, she's trying to her best to make it. She's alone. And she tells me, please help me find someone. Please help me find a man. My life is so miserable. I'm, I, I'm, I need to pay my bills. I'm alone. I'm lonely. Please find me someone. And she has met dozens because she's with every matchmaker in town. I know this. Uh, and she does not get into a relationship because all the men feel kind of they feel this desperation that she's just trying to get somebody. But what about I, I understand the, the some women out there who are having a tough time and maybe you are a little alone. Maybe you don't have any parents or you're in another country or a city and, and you're trying and you we feel like, well, maybe a man will a, a relationship, a, a husband will help us. So I want to be compassionate there, too, because I know that. Yeah that that feeling but but tell so tell us your best advice for somebody in that kind of situation first and foremost they need to really start to love themselves and realize that it doesn't matter if they have a hundred people around them loving them if they still have that feeling of desperation and loneliness outside love cannot fill an inside hole oh tweet a hole. tweet, tweet. <laughs> outside love cannot fill an inside hole it starts from the inside and exudes out and exudes out. You cannot attain what you do not believe you are worth. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> Boy, we're going to keep Twitter busy uh, this week. <laughs> and you Seriously, if you feel like you are not worthy, which at this point she does because she feels like she's been, she has huge abandonment, I, I would really recommend her to get some hypnosis or some energy healing mm -hmm. um, to resolve her abandonment issues because she doesn't have lonely issues. She has abandonment issues. Now, I want to make one other little thing clear here. I'm not saying we should not strive to have a man who is the most successful man because yeah. successful men are amazing strong powerful and you and i we both like us some powerful men we yeah, like those smart men and creative have, and innovative we love that yes they're creative they have everything going for them i'm not saying love is based you can only you know you have to go for a poor man or no. a not successful man i'm saying Get to the level you want to be. You can't be sad and say, I want that happy person because that happiness will rub off on me. No, that sadness is coming from inside of you. You need to get that sadness out. You need to make it hit the road. And then you need to get your own things that you are genuinely happy about, genuinely loving life. Because when you love life, life loves you back and everybody sees it. And then those men will go, you'll be walking down the street and people who would never even notice you will be trying to see you from, from a mile away because they'll feel you. People feel you before they know you. This is so true. I've noticed lately because I work, I do a lot of work on myself, a lot of energy work. I'm a happy person, and I my I know I've been doing some extra meditation and stuff. And my vibration lately, I I just noticed people just look at me and smile. Just I was at the air, airport the other day, just in stores. They just look over, and it's like this kind of they feel my energy. It's not like us, you know. I want to go out with her or anything. It's just women, men, uh, people, kids. Yeah. they're looking. So. Absolutely, they they. Because when you, when you, it's like walking into a club, that beat, yeah. a really, you feel it, all of a sudden you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you're like, hey, you could have been in the first food in the world, and you're like, oh, oh, right, and you're, you're in it, right, you're so in it. Okay, and people, get in it, get in it, get in life, just get your groove on. Yeah. Start dancing. And they, when I was single, I used to dance in my apartment. I was in Chicago. I was all alone. I wanted a guy, but I used to turn on the, my favorite songs and I would dance yeah. around my living room. And, and then, you know what would happen is I'd book a TV commercial or something would come into my life because my vibration was raised. So you got to raise those molecules, yeah. <laughs> those cells. One of the best, you know, running aerobics or some kind of aerobic type of class and dancing are the best things for us to shake off yeah. the old icky energy yeah. and to 
move forward with good energy. You know when a dog bumps its head, it just shakes it off right oh, away. Yeah. And then, then they're like, that. <laughs> right? I can't believe I just did that. But yeah, for us, we don't, we don't just shake it off. We have to dance. We have to run. We have to, you know, we have to really move to shake some things off. So I say consistently and continually dance or run. Do something that shakes that old energy out of you. I love it. All right, before we go, show us that book you were showing me earlier. Oh, yes. The Ever-Evolving Journey. For put, love. Put it right in front of the camera, straight ahead. Yeah. The, the oh. ever evolving journey for love. It Amen. is a 30 day guide to increasing your vibration and love. Oh, yes, I love I found it's available on Amazon and KDP. All right. Well, the links are below and also to my book, Worthy of Love. Hey, my last tweetable don't sell yourself for a purse. Oh, Hold out yes. The whole package. Get the whole package. Make sure that man loves you like he loves you like he loves you because there's nothing better than love. So I want to just show you something here for the ladies who are holding out for a $3,000, $5,000 handbag. Now, not that you can't have a nice purse. I do have a beautiful Chanel bag that was a gift to me that I think is worth about three grand. Uh, I cherish it. I love it. It's my one, you know, really super... Uh, special purse, but I use these more than my Chanel. I've got to show you two things that make me so happy. Uh, check out this purse <laughs> from Mexico City. It, it was ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yes, isn't yes, that yes. cute? Now I, love it. I get more compliments on this bag than the Chanel. So, and then this one I think was three dollars. This purse because I'm all witchy and all, you know, Halloween girl. Look at this one. Look. Oh, oh that is awesome. How fun is that? I, this is like a burlap yeah. sack with bats and a graveyard, but it's a little purse. Hey. And hey. I have so much fun with this purse, and it was three bucks, and I carry, I you know, carry these around, running around. So anyway, I'm just trying to say that, it's the creativity, it's the little things in life, it's the fun, the different, the quirky that's going to make you happy and stand out. And don't worry about what other people think. Just because you're here, just because you're born, you are worthy. You're worthy of love. And anything external doesn't make you any more worthy. So have the frilly stuff. That's great. You're a girl. Wear what you like. Be happy. But just know that those are not the things that are making you worthy of love. And if I can just add, buy your personality, not your brand. If you see something, buy it because you look at it and go, oh, my God, I just love that. Because then when you're wearing that or carrying that, that feeling is going to spread just like with your purses. It's so true, Marla. Perfect point. This is my latest acquisition. Now, I don't carry this around, but when I look at it, I get real happy. And it was $10 as well. I think, you know, 10 bucks, that's about that's a good price that you can get some good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, look at this. Yeah. Look at her name is Rose. <laughs> the roses on her head. I think she would have no problem getting a date. Actually, she got married. I mean, if Rose can get married, look at her husband. She got married <laughs> to the king. She what? What a perfect little couple, and they expect nothing from each other now. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife until the end of eternity. <laughs> I, I have some friends who say, oh, I can't stand skulls. They're so, dis I can't look at, I said, but that's what you look like under your skin. <laughs> we, I think exactly. I, that's what we are. Just imagine ourselves. So we can laugh at ourselves a little. You guys, ladies, you're worried about your looks. This is how you, you really look. And this is how you'll be, <laughs> you'll be looking at some point. So. <laughs> so, so make the most of it. All right. We love you. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye.